Hi guys, welcome back to Max Electronics. In today's video, we will be looking at the motorized bin lead that doesn't work. So stick around. We've got this lead on the bench today. It is supposed to be motorized uh, touch, I assume it's touch uh, lead uh, that operates on um, six AA batteries. The battery is actually out of there. I thought they may have been dead, but they are not. They're all 1.5 volts, so they're fully charged. Well, they alkaline, so they, they full. You're supposed to be touching one, and it opens the other one to close. But the batteries are in, nothing happens, there's no lights. So if I flip it around, oh, there is a power switch here. Doesn't work. And there's another switch to activate and deactivate the sensor right here nothing happens so the only way to do something about it is to open it up there's another interesting he thing here i'm not sure what that is um, yeah i'm not sure what that is anyway let's get the screwdriver and open this up all the screws are out let's somehow get this off oh okay so here's a mechanism so we've got our very dirty inside <laughs> so here's the switches there's a circuit board that we'll have a closer look at and the mechanism so what i'm gonna do is probably Try powering it up. Let me just mark which one's positive. That's the positive. So I'll just put a little red mark on here. So we know it's positive. And I'm gonna try powering it up from a bench power supply. It's gonna be taking nine volts. So there's a problem with the circuit board. Let's try the motor at first. And let's start with the lower power. I'm going to hook up three volts to the motor and see what happens. Nothing. Let's try six volts. Nothing. Nine volts and nothing. I think we may have a dead motor on our hands or a dirty brushes. Yep, it looks like a dead motor. So it's at 9 volts, which is the maximum of what those batteries can give you. And uh, it's not doing anything. So I guess we will have to see if we can replace that motor. So give me a sec. I'll pull apart this mechanism and get the circuit board out and we'll have a look at it up close. I have uh, replaced the motor. I've had actually very similar motor that fitted in perfectly. So I'll just show you the mechanism and this one works fine. So it's just a bunch of gear heads. Um, we can actually power it up now. Uh, it's at nine volts, so. Forward, backwards. Probably actually should clean the gear mechanism before putting it together because you can see there's a lot of stuff in there. But that works, so I'm gonna clean it up, add some grease into there and assemble that together and put it all back in. And then we'll test it out just with the power supply, see how the lead goes up and down before we move on to the circuit board part. I have uh, installed the mechanism and hooked up to power supply. And to be honest, that is really, really fast. So maybe I'll reduce the amperage. I'll show you what I've, hang on, that's closing. So if I open it, I have to hold it down. It's really, really, you know, hardcore. And if I close it, So uh, let me reduce the current to maybe, let's say, 250 milliamps. Let's see if that will change anything. Nope, that's over current. So let's say 500 milliamps. Okay, let's go 400. Uh, 300. Yeah, the lower the current, the better it is because before it was slamming it like there is no tomorrow. So now that the mechanism is good, 
let's get onto the schematic, well, the circuit board itself. I'm going to get it out and have a look, inspect it, and we'll uh, see if we can get it to function. Here is the circuit board out of the device. That's the back that we just saw. We've got a dedicated chip right here. Uh, this one, which is uh, just, it's got a number, but it, it's just a random number. So it's none of the chips that I saw, so I'm, I don't know. We've got LM358 here, standard chip. We've got a little voltage regulator, three transistors. Uh, we've got um, six transistors here for the LEDs, which I'll show you in a second. Our diodes, and we've got our problem right here. This is the SHB, um, one SHB, uh, I think it is, is it? Uh, the P-channel MOSFET, and that's blown, really, really blown. You can see it's bulging. See if I can get it closer. So that would be the problem, and that would be driving the motor because I can see the track is going straight to this connectors, which is powering and the motor out. On the other side, we've got two touch sensors. We've got LEDs. I'm not sure what the LEDs are for. Maybe it's just showing the progress of the, you know, uh, lead. We've got uh, photodiode, or probably, actually, no, that's the infrared receiver, and we've got infrared LED. The switch that we saw here that turns the sensor on or off, what it is, I assume, we've got two options. We can touch to open, touch to close, or we can wave our hand and it'll open wave to close. So that would be turning that sensor off. So in case, you know, if you need to be doing something, you don't want it accidentally opening and closing, you can just leave those ones. And if you want the sensor, you can turn, enable the sensor. And we've got a hole sensor. That's to detect when the lead is closed. There's a magnet on the lead, which I'll show you once we assemble it together. The reason for the hole sensor, what I would have done, like you could put just a read switch. Simple read switch would do the trick of sensing when the lead's closed. But I think what they are doing is... Uh, as the magnetic field gets closer, as the lead shutting down, it starts sensing and it slows the motor down. So I think that's what that's what I would have done. So I don't know if that's the case. But let me replace. I already got a replacement somewhere on the table. There it is. Oh, if I can pick it up. So here is the replacement uh, SHB, one SHB, whatever it is. Uh, that's going to go into place, and luckily enough, I was just going to see which track it was, well, like if it was a common, you know, NPN or PNP on that uh, blown transistor, if um, I couldn't read the, the label, and just replace was probably the most powerful I can get in, the, in this package, but luckily I could read that it was the one SHB, I'm pretty sure, let me just confirm, I'll just read this one, and this one is... A1SHB, so yeah, A1SHB is a PNP transistor, so 20 volts, uh, 2 and a half amps, I believe. So let me just replace that, and then we'll assemble it and try it out. The board is back in there, and while I was changing that little transistor here, I've uh, changed it, and I've decided to probe the, you know, the lines between uh, ground and uh, positive, and uh, they were shorted on the input, and I which is unusual, I think maybe that's what actually caused it to blow. So I've uh, straight away paid attention to the voltage regulator here, and the capacitor, which is a C2, I don't know if you can see on your screen here, it's right here, little ceramic capacitor, that was shorted. That is the first thing, it's actually, you will be surprised, you would think that they're quite reliable, but they are not. Uh, they are very unreliable. I had a few equipment where this capacitor is, well, not just this one, but in general, power capacitors, filtering capacitors, just they, they go. Not just electrolytic, but those tiny ceramic. And the circuit doesn't work. Like I've had this in a video camera where the LCD wouldn't work and a few functions. It was just really odd behavior. And the capacitor was inside the LCD itself. It was just I disordered it and uh, it was working fine. So the same thing with, uh, what else had that? One of the washing machines, a friend of mine brought a circuit board for me to fix for the washing machine it was. And it was the same story. It was 12 volt line there, but five volt was just shorting out and turns out it was one of those capacitors. And the same story here. So I think that capacitor actually caused that uh, little transistor to blow. So I've replaced it. I haven't tested it out yet. I've got nine volts current limited, just in case if it's still shorted. So let me uh, plug this in. All right, that's plugged in. So I'm gonna flip it just in case if the lead's gonna, you know, operate.
Okay, I'm about to power it up now. Okay, well that's current limiting, so that's so far working. Let's uh, go to current and lift it up to say one amp. Okay, well, um, maybe I need to adjust the tension on the spring. There's a spring there that you can adjust. Okay. Let's try that again. All right, so it is working now. Except it's in reverse. So I need to reverse the motor. I think I've... Uh, plug them in incorrectly because you press the close and it opens it so let's try it that way and then we'll try the sensor as well all right let's try it again so open yep okay and the sensor is now off so let's turn it on all right now let's do that I wonder why it's doing this. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So, let's have a look why it's, um... I have figured out why there wasn't, uh, it wasn't working with the sensor because of the DC power supply. It must have some sort of a ripple in there and it was creating interference and it was, as you saw, getting stuck. Uh, but once the battery operated, there's no problem. So let me show you. I'll just turn it on. I've already assembled it. Uh, the lid is powered on. So if I open it manually, it opens and I can close it again. No worries. If I swipe, It'll open, it'll count down, and then it'll close. So that's how that thing works. And if we disable that switch underneath there, now it wouldn't work for swipe, but it'll still work to open and close the bin. So it's auto-close. So let's try again. I will swipe. And it'll close now. So this is it for the bin. It's it's all done. Oh, it's triggering. Trying to open. Nope, don't open. Let me turn that off. Okay, so uh, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, don't forget to click thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until the next time, my name is Max. Bye.